who better to talk about the intricacies and the behind-the-scenes stuff uh, of baseball? I, I think this guy knows more baseball than anybody I've ever met in my life. Maybe Billy Martin might have known more, but uh, he, he, he learned from Billy anyway. And that's Buck Showalter, and thank you for joining us, Buck. How you doing? Good. I've been sitting here on hold listening to Ageless Mel advertise. My <laughs> and it doesn't that's apply to you at all, doesn't right? doesn't apply to you, Buck. You're fine. I, I'll, ne I'll never do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's the question. How prevalent hey, is, is sign stealing, Buck? And forget about the illegal kind, but sign stealing from good baseball people from the dugout. Is it a big part of the game? Well, first of all, Buck, probably 80% of it is paranoia, and that's kind of what you're hired to do. There's a... You know, you've heard me say before, Mike, I'm not paranoid, I'm just alert, you know. <laughs> and one of the first things you do when you start a game, at least the managers I grew up with, is you check out the first base coach, the third base coach, you're listening for sounds out of the dugout. There's about four or five checkpoints you make to make sure you watch the body language of people on the bench if they're on the top step talking back. There's just a way to tell if your guy's tipping pitches or your catcher's setting up too early. Or, But, uh, you know, this is a different level. So... Uh, that that's always been a part of it. You know, when you've got teams that have been together a long time, which doesn't happen much anymore. You know, Houston's been together quite a while. Remember the old Milwaukee Brewers with Gatner and Yount and Molitor, Cecil Cooper, Simmons. Those guys were together forever, Gorman Thomas. And everybody knew they were doing it, but you did something to counteract it. I mean, you remember when Joe got upset at uh, my third base coach in Baltimore one night. He thought Bobby was giving signs, which he wasn't. I mean, so, yeah, it's it, it, that part of it's always been a, uh, something that you have to be aware of as part of your job mm -hmm. description, but this is a different level. Now, even at that different level, Buck, uh, how much responsibility does the opposition have to figure it out and change it? Like Farquhar in that video that was sent out when the White Sox... Good point. Good you know, point. You know he, they picked it up. They changed the sign, and they were able to, to, to strike out the batter. Well, so at well, what level better, does it better. fall on you to, hey, i got to make the adjustments? Exactly. It's part of your job discretion, but it's also what you do from the first inning. Like, you know, people used to talk about Toronto doing stuff. But what they did, they worked real hard. First of all, there's no secrets in baseball. People are changing teams all the time. They're, they're always sharing information. They don't, you know, pitchers don't want to get beat by a team. So you got to, you know, just because someone's being interviewed doesn't mean they're guilty, whether it's A.J. or or uh, Carlos or uh, Alex. So let's, let's hold off there. You know, I'd interview them, too. But uh, I think... One of the things you look for, like sometimes he would go two innings in Toronto and they wouldn't be off balance on a single off-speed pitch. That's where your antennas go up and your flag goes up, especially a fastball changeup guy. Uh, that's that's where you, even that tape that's going around, you know, they call it one of those pitches a changeup, which was a breaking ball. But, you know, the pitchers figure it out. When you, you've got, when you know you have an above average changeup, can you imagine how long you think Greg Maddox would go in a game before he figured something was up? If they weren't all, you know, fooled at all by his changeup, you know, it would take him maybe two or three hitters because right. great pitchers and good managers and pitching coaches make a living out of reading people's swings. And when you see guys for three innings not be off balance or or uh, take a bad swing at something off speed, your, your antennas go up. Well, th this whole thing is is right now focused on the 2017 Astros. You were the manager of the the Orioles in 2017, so you faced them at least six times that year. Did you have suspicions that something was rotten there? I don't know about rotten, Mike. We had some things with the lights. You know, the, uh, the they changed the lights there, and we, we, we were striking out a lot more than we normally do, and we, we were more concerned some with the lighting. I remember that because the LED lighting was in their clubhouse but wasn't in the Disney Club. And we're always paranoid, okay? And half of it, you know, really you got to be careful about taking it too far. But, uh, you know, when you go into a ballpark, that's part of your advanced scouting thing. And you believe me, people share information. You know, you, you have relationships with other managers. People in the American League West want to give you information when you're going in because they want those teams beaten. So you're always sharing that type of stuff. But there's there's ways around it. You know, with the, everybody's using multiple signs in, in Houston now when you go in there. We did it in Toronto. I told a story on the air yesterday, Buck, and I'm sure you remember this. George Steinbrenner called down to Lou Pinella and said, the guy on the mound is cheating. I want you to go out and have him checked. And Lou said, we can't do that. And George said, why? And Lou said, because our guy's cheating too. So how many teams around baseball right now are very, very nervous because they're doing similar things? Uh, I wouldn't think electronically they're, they're concerned. But I understand a lot of this is from the electronic, analytical, whatever, because... 
people in there are seeing this. It's, it's such a, a wide-ranging problem, Mike, from a standpoint of there's an inconsistency about where the video rooms are, the replay room. This is going to drive another uh, possible uh, stake into the manager should do everything spontaneously about replays because you're talking to a guy sometimes within shouting distance that's looking at the play. Right. What, what Really what you got to find out is who okayed and who put supposedly this feed because everybody's got a center field feed in their TV broadcast, but who's putting this feed directly into the to the hallway, so to speak? Because that's a real quick turnaround. I mean, you get stuff from catchers setting up too fast. That's something Sanchez has done a great job. They've done a nice job with him. Because we initially started catching, he would spread on the break them on all speed pitches if you could get it out there quick enough. But when they shake off and they're still getting the pitch, that's when I'm going, "Ooh, that's not good." But you've said on occasion in, in, during this interview that this this would be taking it too far. This is beyond the gamesmanship and the hard work to bring in electronics. So, so what can so happen? What should work, happen then? What what should the discipline be in your mind? Well, that's that's a million dollar question. Is for me personally, if you find them guilty, you got to hurt them in the W column for 2020. How now, do you that, do that? Well, that's the question. I'm open to your your suggestions. I know. I mean, I uh, suspending aren't going to do it. Right, so, so, suspending Hinge for a year is that do it? Because then Joe Espada moves up to be the well, manager. Let, let, yeah, let's be careful about throwing him under the bus right away. Let's let the facts play out a little bit. You know, AJ's my dealings with him seems to be a pretty ethical guy, and it sometimes gets a little embarrassed by some of the stuff that might go on over there sometimes. But he, uh, uh, I think, how do you hurt them, Mike, without hurting your fan base? What do they do at SMU? You know, when they their football program the was death uh, but you know, what do you do? What, what I know one thing, you know, if I'm the Atlanta Braves, I'm going okay. Let me see what you're going to do because they basically handle them one of the toughest penalties ever. They want to make an example of them in the international market. Yep. I'm the New York Yankees, and I just got beat by these in the playoffs. I'm watching real closely because mm -hmm. you know the, the draft picks doesn't really do it. For, you know that, that might be fine. International signing and stuff. There's ways to punish them. But for me, you know, you've got to take away their chance of having success in 2020 in a lot of ways. You've got to think about that because that's the way you really get everybody's attention. Yeah, but, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think along with you, Buck. I don't know how you do that. I mean, you can't make a player go away. You can't turn players into free agents. I, I don't know how you do yeah, it. Also, and also, do you think you should really be thinking about how fair you are to the fans in Houston? If you do something now, all of a sudden they know they can't win in 2020, is that... Is that fair punishment? Well, but you know what? Know. I, the way I've always looked at that is, well, what? Sorry, there's always that collateral damage. I I can't make my punishment yep. lighter right. because there might be um, guilt by association or collateral damage to it. All right, yeah, Look, do don't do don't blame you know if if the fans are upset, Buck, don't blame Major League Baseball. Blame the Astros for doing it in the first right. place. So what do they do in the NCAA football or basketball when someone's called cheating? Well, let's see, that's you know, where, they, they, uh, you know, they'll, they'll take away their wins. They'll take away their scholarships. Or, I mean, or they're on probation and they can't win a championship. Can you, can you, can Major League Baseball, sorry, for the Astros, for the next three years, you can't sign a free agent. Or for the next two years, you can't sign a free agent. That won't, that, that won't hurt them that much. Now, <laughs> this, this, just, this, just <laughs> came, this just came out, Buck. <laughs> Trevor Plouffe, formerly of the Twins, said that, mm -hmm. um, you know, during the World Series, it was so loud you couldn't hear the trash can. He said a reliable source told him the Astros had somebody watching a live feed then relaying the pitch calls via earpiece to the bullpen catcher, hands up on the fence for a fat small, hands down for off speed. Does that sound like it's doable in real time? Yes. It is doable. Yeah. Because if you want, that's a quick transfer. Mike, when you're talking about electronic, you're talking about a quick transfer. And let's keep in mind the pace that people pitch at. By the time you get a sign, by the time you deliver a pitch, what is it, 30 minutes? No, just kidding. But, <laughs> Close. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a long lag there, okay? And that's another reason why guys should, maybe this is how we'll get pitchers to pitch faster. Hey, if I pitch fast. You, you know, I remember we were, Mike, one time in 89, we were playing the Phillies in a playoff or a regular season game in Albany. And their manager was giving pitches by signs directly to the catcher. Ozzy Virgil Jr., I think. Jason Grimsley might have been the pitcher. And, and I'm watching for an inning. I go, my gosh, you know, nose was a changeup, ear fastball in, other ear fastball away, breaking ball was a hat. So, you know, we had a metal pole in the middle. We had a lead bat. And Mark Meyer, my pitching coach, would he would bang the pole every time there was something soft coming. And we wore him out. Yeah, I remember the next day, Jason said, geez, I seemed like they knew everything was coming. Well, we did. Now, is that cheating? Or is that just noticing their managers giving pitches 
directly to the catcher. And, yeah, you know See, you I, I don't think that's cheating. No, and I don't when think you so brought either. up the right. thing that Joe was that's upset cheating. with Bobby, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, why would he be upset? Not... He wasn't doing anything. He was well, picking it up from the field. Well, well Mike, uh, well, exactly. You know, change it. If your catcher's not tucking his signs, uh, right. you know, I've done, I've done a big leagues where the first base coach gave the pitches to the right-hand hitter and the third base coach gave them to the left-hand hitter. Well, you know, you're, and it's very easy to watch. And that's, you know, Joe's watching to see if some guys, that's one of the things you do early in the ball game. Fortunately for us, and, you know, lucky for Joe, we weren't. And I took it personal because, you know, Bobby's not going to, how's Bobby going to take up for himself there? But I understand it's paranoia. But we weren't guilty. But even time. but but even if you were guilty, you were guilty of you weren't guilty of a crime. I mean, anything that's picked up on the field to me is fair game. If a guy's at second base and can see the signs and relate it to the yeah. batter, that's not right. cheating. Mike, Mike, that's another problem. You know, even you'll see some teams uh, with first and second or first, second, third put the first baseman right in behind the the runner at first to keep him from looking in. If he's got to be aware of the guy coming in behind him. It's another thing you do. You know, I've always wondered guys making five or six million dollars a year, why wouldn't you hire your roommate from college to travel around and sit in center field and, and nothing else, just give location. But another problem that they're going to expose is, I think, how many times there's these TV monitors close to the dugout? Without mentioning a ballpark, there's one ballpark where, you know, if I just crane my head a little bit to the right, you can see a monitor underneath the cameraman's feet, so to speak. Right. And, yeah, you know, there's got to be a better policing of all that. I think they should uniformly move all the replay uh, rooms uh, away from the dugouts. Even at Yankee Stadium, uh, the visiting uh, replay booth is right behind the dugout. I mean, and you take, also in the home steps. dugout. Well, I don't know. I don't go over there. You don't want you don't like cameras down there either way, Mike. Right, right. right. No, remote, but remote, I mean, but that's remote, legal. Remote cameras. I mean, that's legal though. To put the the, well, the room is. right there. Right, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It should be. It should be in a uniform place, X number of feet away from the dugout. I mean, Mike, pan the dugout sometime during a game between innings. How many people are in there? Four. Right. Where are they, Mike? Where are they? They're probably in the video room. Yeah, they're either looking at their last at bat or or no. uh, up somewhere else. You know, you really want to. Call some strife in baseball, make everybody stay in a dugout between innings. Now, here's the other dilemma, Buck, because there's a report, and I understand it's just a report, but let's just say for sake of argument, we find out that there are people involved in the 27 Astro controversy that aren't there anymore. So how do they get punished? Because there's, there's one report that, that Beltron and Cora were involved in this. Well, one's with the Red Sox, one's with the Mets. I mean, so you want to hurt the Astros for sure. But do they get away scot free, and is it fair well, to punish them when it's the Mets and the Ash the Red Sox that would suffer the punishment? Well, you know that, that's well, you you hired them, you know. <laughs> well, that, that goes that goes back to the fan yeah. point, right? Well, it's also you know you, you do your homework and everything. But let's be careful about or this Carlos or Alex or even AJ. I'm going to say it again because every team has some. Well, most every good team has someone, including our good Baltimore teams, that was very good at picking up pitches from a pitcher. You know, they might flare their, their hat. I mean, their uh, glove on a changeup. They might do this. They might do that. You know, I had one or two in Baltimore as good as you want to see. Who are they? I'm, in, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might, go, I might go get but they're worth having around just to, and you can see the body language. You, if you watch other dugouts, you can tell who that guy is. You know, they're studying it left and right, and they, you know, they can't, they can't wait to tell somebody, and, um, and that's what pitching it, coaches do a lot of them. They, they keep an eye on their own pitcher to make sure they're not doing that. If you were the Yankees and you got eliminated by this Astro team in 17 and 19, would you feel that you got robbed? Not yet. But not if, it's, yet. if it found out to be true, how would you feel? Uh, I ain't too happy. But I want to make sure my, before I start voicing my unhappiness, right. I want to make sure that I'm not guilty in some form or fashion. At some point, you sit down with and I tell you, Mike, it's hard for me to imagine that anybody in that clubhouse, and for the most part in the front office, doesn't have some idea. I mean, I'm not naive. You're not either. I mean, you're with people seven days a week for almost eight months. You know a lot of things that uh, are, there's not many secrets down there. First of all, nobody can keep a secret in baseball. You know that. Are you surprised that Mike Fires came out and put his name to this? No, I think uh, really you might see more and more because people, uh, you know, it, it costs. It costs people their jobs. Yeah. Whether it be a coach or a manager, sometimes I look at. I've had a couple of coaches call me, you know, and 
you know, I, I was working so hard with this pitcher. Now I don't know why he couldn't get anybody out or something. Yeah, you know, it, it, believe me, it's a it's a big branch. You, you, you think your job's tough, Mike, some days. How about the commissioner right now? I, I, I said he probably you. thinks I need this on my plate. I mean, the, the whole world is watching this because the, 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 the discipline in football with the Patriots, it didn't even it didn't even hurt them. Nothing. Not a bit. Yeah, yeah. but this one, you know, the, the question I, I beg, to, you know, I'd love to hear what your listeners think. Like, what is the punishment? You know, it's a tough, that's the toughest thing for me to come up with. Because I just think somehow you got to hurt their ability to, to the, in the W column. That you, you're, I, if that's the case, if, if they're guilty, it, hold on. Your, your former player, Kevin Gaussman, came out today and said, you know what, this is a big deal. And he, he said, there are pitchers that, that have lost their major league career and got sent down because that's they got hit hard in point. Houston. He said, this is a big deal. That's my point. And, you know, and Goss, Goss has tried to try to. Garner a good breaking ball, but he's basically a two-pitch guy. Fastball can't get off of a split. And when you get that 50-50 guy, like a lot of relief pitchers are, and let's face it, you know, these guys can turn around a bullet in the big league. So if, if, if you're just the heck with the velocity, you know, it's not the velocity, it's the, the pitch. You're always looking for that 10 to 15 mile an hour difference between the velocity of your pitches. And that's an eternity. When you see guys taking change-ups and not even budging, you know, watch a game sometime and, and tell me where your red flag goes up. Now, there's a difference between educated guessing. You know, if, if Maddox is throwing 60% change-ups, at some point, you're going to look change-up. The problem is his, his arm speed is so good. I mean, heck, we, one night we knew every pitch Randy Johnson was throwing, and he shut us out. Okay, that's just, you know, it happens sometimes. So, Buck, let me ask you, can you, can you point out where the line would be that if you cross it, it's something really messed up versus being gamesmanship. What would you have to hear about this where you go, okay, this is a real serious problem? Well, what I'm hearing right now. The electronic. So, right that, now. so the electronic, the electronic piece electronic of it. Part of, Got it. Well, let's face it. Look at the people that are there. Everyone is trying to bring something in a clubhouse, whether it be uh, someone that uh, didn't, you know, is very analytically driven, sabermetrically driven, electronically dr driven, uh, video driven, but really can't bring something else. So they're always looking for something to separate themselves. And quite frankly, it's a lazy way to do work. You know, they're trying to take the price, place of a lot of veteran scouts, and I call them boots on the ground people. This is what guys used to tell you when they'd go sit on a team for three days, this thing they used to have called advanced scouts. So... Yeah, this is kind of uh, a cheaper. I don't. I don't want to say lazier, but I'll say kind of. You know, it. It's some of what's uh, our whole our whole game is. It's kind of a for me. I'm getting a lot of calls from people about this is kind of an example, of kind of what's going on in our game uh, all together. We're talking with Buck Schall here on the Michael K Show. Buck here, I think, could be an issue too. I want to run this by you. The game essentially is run now by people that didn't play the game. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Ivy League guys that are geniuses, and they don't, I think they my, are there. Like not everybody, not, not everybody went to Ivy League or a genius. I've met some real dummies, uh, common sense from there, trust me. Go ahead. But, but my, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, my point is that they don't know the unwritten rules. They don't know the right from the wrong. Yeah, I mean, I know what the commissioner said, but they're looking for an edge in any kind of, even if it moves the needle a tenth. And, you know, old baseball guys would know this is not the right thing to do. I don't know if the guys from Cornell and from Harvard really care about that. They just want to get an edge. Does that make sense? Well, maybe, they, maybe when they do the interviews, they should have an, an ethics class talk. You know, in today's game, Mike, if they don't have an app for what's right and what's wrong, they may not be able to understand it. That's pretty well said. Well, how are you doing? I, well... <laughs> How do you, I'm doing great. Yeah? I'm doing great. All right. Yeah. Worried about Alabama getting in the Final Four. Yeah, they shouldn't. They lost. Excuse me? They, they lost. lost. They lost. So how? why should they be in? At, at home, too. LSU's pretty good. Yeah, they are. They are. Ohio State's real. Usually I'm kind of down with Big Ten. Ohio State's a real deal. Is Tagovailoa really a, a legit NFL quarterback, you think? You know what? I, I, I got to tell you, I think he's one when he's, when he's healthy, he's one of the most accurate passers maybe in college football history. Watch how many times he hit guys, hits guys on a dead run. But, man, I tell you, being able to project, it's like projecting a high school player to play in the big leagues. Being able to project, project college guys into the NFL, I tell you one thing, the quarterback in LSU has got pro quarterback written all over him, doesn't he? If you had to do it all over again and could push a button, would you rather be a college football coach or a baseball manager? Yes. 
<laughs> and no, one of them, you, know you would have never met Michael K. It's, it's very easy from the uh, ivory tower uh, giving your opinion about something you've never done. But, you know, getting a chance to be around some Coach Parcells and some of the great coaches, it, uh, it's fun to watch. But you love college football. Well in Baltimore. You love yeah, it. I, 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 I like the... Uh, you know, it brings back memories of my dad. I used to get up early in the morning and once a month and we got to drive to Tuscaloosa Park a mile from there so we didn't have to pay for parking. <laughs> Some guy with Pinkerton security would let us in and we'd sit in the faculty section because they're the only people that wouldn't go to the game. And and I'd watch Coach Bryant, Joe Namath, all those guys. You know, it, was, it was special. Did, okay, you, awesome. did, did you develop any fondness for the Ravens in Baltimore or no? Of course. I, I saw what I was getting ready to say. Coach Harbaugh and I got to be pretty close and He's special. I love the way he's changed uh, that that thought process with Lamar Jackson. A lot of people, he could have been taken. And I want to tell you, that's if he can stay healthy, he's got a certain way of kind of slithering around that stays away from those hits like a lot of the other run past quarterbacks. And I, I love Coach Harbaugh. If you guys would go to some of his practices, you know, one day he, he uh, wanted me to deliver the message to the team, and I was all excited, nervous. Ozzie knew some big Alabama tight end. I walk out there and so I'm going to talk, and I said, Coach, who are y'all playing this week? He goes, uh, the Patriots. I said, oh, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and uh, no, it's pretty good. Buckley, thank so, you for so, coming yeah. on. That's really cool okay, to you. How, how was it? I thought. He, what do you think? Though? I thought you. Uh, were, I think this is the best you've ever been. You're, you are tremendous. Yeah, the only no, thing that me, you do I, better I hear, is manage. I want to hear the punishment. I, I want to hear what the fans think. What's the proper punishment? Without getting stupid. Well, uh, well, right when you hang up with us, Buck, you should go stream us right now on the ESPN app. You can listen to what everyone has to say. Wait, wait, wait did you just say an app? Did you just say free, free <laughs> yeah. Appetizer. Grab an app. No, 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 wings. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's why you can't accuse Buck of ever cheating. He doesn't even know how to download just, an app. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to get over the ageless man thing. Uh, you know what? We'll give you all the details on that off the Yeah. All right, Mike, you text me, Mike. I'll figure out how to do this texting thing. Let me know what everybody says. <laughs> That's a great idea. All Bye -bye, right. Th guys. Thanks, Mike. Take care. care.